Hello, hello. It is time to talk about the t-test and how to perform a t-test on some data in SAS. Before we begin, let's just talk about the t-test and when to use the t-test. Remember that the t-test is used when you have some small sample and you're trying to make a prediction about the population. So we have a small sample of data here and let's just say this data represents the age of people surveyed who think Hillary Clinton should go to prison. So all these people thought Hillary Clinton should go to prison and these are their ages. So 45, 54, 36, 15, so on. Okay, so now let's say we want to uh, test the null hypothesis and say the mean age of people who think Hillary Clinton should go to prison is 50. So let's write that down as our null hypothesis. Um, mean age is 50 and we want to test to see if that is correct and we'll have an alternate hypothesis and we'll say alternatively um, alternatively the mean age is less than 50 so this is what we're going to test and we're going to use SAS to test this now the code for this is nice and simple it's just going to be proc t test and we can specify the data the data is just demo now, normally we would end this with a semicolon. Every other procedure I've shown in my videos so far, we just put a semicolon here and we're done. But we can add a couple more options here since we're doing the t-test. The first thing that we're going to say is exactly what our null is. Remember that we're always testing against the mean. We want to say the mean is greater, the mean is this, the mean is not this. But so our mean, uh, well, our null is that the mean is equal to 50. So we're going to say our null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 50. Now sides represents our alternate hypothesis. So the three options for sides are L, U, or two. So lower, upper, or two tail. Now our alternate in this case is that the mean age is less than 50, so ours is going to be an L. The last thing that we can specify is our alpha value. So we can just say, let's do 95% uh, or an alpha value of 0.05. Now we can go ahead and put our semicolon. And the next line is just as easy. Now we just need to specify what variable we want. Well, there's only one variable and that's X. So we say variable X. Now let's put a run there and we'll run the whole thing. And now we'll talk about how to analyze these results. Okay, it's going to give you a big printout here. I just want to talk about this top section. So it said we tested the variable X and did a one sample t-test. The number of observations, this N was eight. Uh, of the observations, the mean was 30.5, standard deviation was 14.35, and so on. But this is the important section down here. There were seven degrees of freedom. The t-value was calculated to be negative 3.84, and really what we're concerned about is this p-value. Now, if you know your statistics, we say that if the p-value is less than alpha, then we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. So recall that our alpha value was 0.05. In this case, our p-value, 0.003, is less than our alpha value, so we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. So let's go back and take a look at these hypotheses. So our null hypothesis was that the mean age is equal to 50. We say that we can reject that now and determine that the alternate is true. So the mean age is not equal to 50. We should say that the mean age is less than 50. That's what we've concluded due to the results of this t-test. And just a few more things here. As I was going over the results, I said the degrees of freedom was seven. Well, how did they obtain seven? They got seven because in a one sample t-test, uh, the formula is just n minus 1. So 8 minus 1 gives you 7. That's just the rule for a one sample t-test. I want to also analyze our data here quickly. Uh, our null hypothesis states that given this sample, we're trying to predict if the entire population of the people who think Hillary Clinton should go to prison, if their age is has a mean of 50. So that's what we're trying to predict based upon this small sample. But if you just analyze the sample, we should know that the odds of it being 50 are incredibly slim because there's only one number here that's even greater than 50 and everything else is really pretty significantly less than 50. So we were correct and it matches our, uh, our data that we ended up rejecting that null hypothesis.